Back due to popular demand, it's system review time. At least two of you asked me to do a system review, so uh, here it is. It's the Commodore C16. What can I tell you about this wondrous <coughs> little machine? It is largely a cut-down Commodore 64. It's got a different CPU. It's a MOS 7501 running at 0.8 megahertz, nearly it's 0.89 megahertz, which is apparently more powerful than the C64 one. I can't confirm whether that's true, but that's what I've read. System memory, it's got a 32K ROM and 16K of RAM. Only 12K of that is available to you if you're programming in BASIC. The BASIC apparently is enhanced over the version of BASIC that's in the C64. There are specific commands <coughs> excuse me, for uh, graphics and sound that weren't available in the C64. The sound and graphics are both, both produced by what is called a TED chip. Uh, sound is two channel across four octaves and the white noise generator which is absolutely pants compared to the SID chip that you get in the um, C64. It is frankly rubbish and if you've been watching any of the videos I've been doing of C16 games you will know that it's rubbish. Colour. Okay, it's actually 15 colours but at eight different levels of luminance like brightness plus black and that equates to 121 colours. Um, if you're an Amiga user, you'll be familiar with Extra Half Bright, where they dip down the brightness of the colours to create extra colours. And they've done that here. Um, video resolution, 320 by 200 bitmap. Two colours per cell, I don't know what that means. 320 by 160, three colours plus background per cell. Don't know what that means either. Some of you might, I don't don't care. Um, so yes, the C16, how this came about, originally Jack Tramiel wanted something to compete with the Sinclair Spectrum, and I'm talking about this little beastie here. These were dirt cheap, they weren't particularly high tech, they sold by the bucket load. Considerably cheaper than the C64, and in the UK they were they sold better than the 64 um, and he wanted to compete on an equal playing field if you like and that meant making something cheap and cheerful his solution was a computer that it exists today there are some out there and it's called the C116 and it looked a bit like that the plus four in fact it looked a lot like that it was almost exactly the same case except the keys were nasty cheap horrible rubber things like he got on the spectrum and the idea was that it sold for under a hundred dollars or pounds or something, I can't remember. So yes, there, there was the 116, there was the rubber keyboard thing, and there were, there were assorted other models um, with built-in software, with a speech synthesizer, with different memory configurations, kind of a complex lineup, and all of these went to a trade show, and the response was, what the bloody hell's all this stuff? People didn't like it. And big hoo-ha at Commodore, Jack Tramiel left. I don't know if it was by his own choice or if he was ousted, but anyway, he left. And the marketing people took over and screwed it all up, really. Uh, the result was the Plus 4 and the C16. As you can see, they, they ditched the Plus 4 case for the C16 and stuck it in a VIC-20 case, pretty much, but with this lovely <coughs> charcoal and grey colour scheme, which... I think it's kind of disgusting really but there you go and they put it out as an entry-level computer for people who were serious about computing mm. they, it, it, it basically slotted into the Commodore range where the VIC-20 had been they dropped the VIC-20 at this point put the C16 in there basically you know the, the idea was kids who want to learn computers and can't afford or their parents can't afford a C64 will buy one of these Mm. Of course, at this time, the Amstrad CPC 464, this wee beastie, was just about to hit the market. And the, uh, uh, the Atari ST and the Mega 500 were on their way. People knew about these things. And the C64 was already there and getting cheaper. And the Spectrum was there if they wanted something cheap. So were they going to buy one of these? 
Bearing in mind, you have seen probably the games that run on this. I will add links to those games, or some of them, just in case you haven't seen them. Um, were they going to buy one of these, considering what the alternatives were? No. It just, it didn't sell. I don't know how well it did in the USA, but in the UK it was a joke. Um, I have only ever in the real world seen one of these where someone actually owned it and played it. I, I know of people who've had them sitting in their lofts, but I only ever saw one being used, and that was by a 14-year-old girl back in the day uh, when I was playing my Acorn Electron. I, I lodged with her mother and she, her daughter had got one of these, and I looked at it and thought, I bought my Acorn Electron for £70 as they were being discontinued and this was sort of new and I thought what a steaming pile of rubbish. Apparently some very good programmers did do some good work with it. Uh, I haven't found that software. <laughs> Fire Ant is quite good. Apparently Icicle Works is quite good though I've only got the, the plus four version of that. We shall see. Yes, something else I must point out on this and this I think it was very very cynical of Commodore. It looks, it, it's same case as the uh, C64 and VIC-20, you would think, great, I can use my peripherals, I can use my tape deck, I can use my joystick, but no, you would think, joystick, and it is, I have to say, a very, very nice joystick, this is one of the nicest joysticks I've ever used, but look at this, they've gone and changed the connector, totally non-standard, you know, a, a Commodore joysticks up to this point had used the Atari joystick connector and there were hundreds, thousands of those you could buy really cheap but now you have to buy the Commodore stick and again they changed the connector for the tape deck as well which is fine in that it generally these were sold as a bundle so you had the tape deck come with it but if you broke your tape deck you were screwed you couldn't just plug your VIC-20 or C64 tape deck into it, though why you would want to plug a C64 one in. If you've got a C64, you wouldn't be using one of these. But you know, you had to buy the special C16 one, and it was a rip-off, really. They were just making damn sure if you wanted peripherals, you had to buy Commodore ones. This didn't help the popularity of the mach machine at all. So there you go. It is basically a cut-down C64. More colours, but no sprites. Weedy sound. It is cheaper because there are fewer chips. Dirt cheap, but frankly, rubbish. Should you buy one? Hmm. Only if, if you're a masochist, really, or you just want to have everything. If you want something to play good games on, no, I wouldn't bother. Yeah. Right, editing time, I think. I've run way over. Thank you for watching.